For years, we were fed a story, not just a set of facts, but a carefully crafted narrative, one that painted the world of advanced technology as a fortress with high walls, guarded gates, and a handful of chosen keepers. At the heart of that fortress was the chip. Not just any chip, but the three-nanometer marvel, a microscopic masterpiece of speed, power, and precision. It was more than just a piece of silicon. It was a symbol, a line in the sand, a technological threshold that one nation, China, was never supposed to cross. The story was clean, simple, and comforting to those on the inside. The rules were set, without the most advanced tools, specifically the extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, or EUVs, produced by one Dutch company, ASML. It was simply impossible to build the most advanced chips. These machines, hulking giants the size of buses, loaded with some of the most delicate optics ever engineered, were sold only to a select few. And if you couldn't buy them, you were out of the game. Sanctions followed. Strategies were deployed. The idea was to contain, restrict, delay, high fence, small yard, they called it. A method of blocking China's access to the key technologies required to build the next generation of semiconductors. It wasn't just geopolitics. It was chess played on a silicon board. And the message was clear. Without EUV, China couldn't play. Game over. But what if the story was wrong? Not just the conclusion, but the entire foundation? What if the idea that EUV was the only path to progress was never a hard truth, but a convenient belief? What if the wall that was meant to keep China out wasn't as solid as we were told, but filled with cracks, with hidden doors, with paths no one thought could be walked? Somewhere behind closed doors, that new story began to take shape. It didn't happen with a bang. There were no press releases, no global unveilings, no victory parades. Instead, there were whispers, fragments of data, technical leaks. Subtle signs that something had shifted, that something was coming. And at the center of this new chapter was a company many had already written off, Huawei. Once a rising giant in telecommunications and smartphones, Huawei became ground zero in the US-China tech conflict. Cut off from Google services, squeezed by international bans, and blocked from acquiring top-tier chips, many believed Huawei's best days were behind it. They were supposed to fade away, slowly, quietly. But instead, they did something else. They adapted. They pivoted. They evolved. Huawei didn't just survive. It became a rallying point, a symbol of national resilience, a catalyst for innovation, and an unspoken declaration that no gatekeeper, no matter how powerful, could hold back a determined revolution forever. They turned inward, built their own ecosystem, launched Harmony OS, and began working closely with domestic partners to overcome one seemingly insurmountable obstacle, the semiconductor blockade. That's where the plot thickens. Because while the world watched Taiwan's TSMC and South Korea's Samsung race ahead with EUV-powered manufacturing, China's chipmakers went to work with what they had. Enter SMIC, the Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation. Without EUV, SMIC faced a ceiling. Or so it seemed. But instead of waiting for access, they took a different route. They pushed older technology to its absolute limit. That older technology was called DUV, Deep Ultraviolet Lithography. It's less precise, more complex, and considerably more difficult to use at the cutting edge. Producing advanced chips with DUV requires a process known as multi-patterning. Imagine trying to paint the same intricate pattern over and over again using multiple stencils, layering designs with excruciating accuracy, knowing one misstep can ruin the entire chip. It's hard. It's expensive. It's not how the industry wanted to move forward. But for SMIC, it was the only path available. And somehow they made it work. First, they hit 14-0. Then seven Michikir. Then came the shock waves, mounting evidence that they had crossed into five millimeter territory. And now, if recent analysis and product teardowns are to be believed, they may have even touched the Holy Grail itself three nanometers. Using only DUV, without EUV, without permission. That breakthrough didn't just move the goalpost, it rewrote the rules of the game. Because if China can produce three nanometer chips without EUV, the entire narrative about the necessity of ASML's machines collapses. The premise behind the sanctions, that without certain tools, China couldn't compete, no longer holds. It wasn't a lack of capability, it was a lack of access. And now access has been circumvented. Of course, this doesn't mean the technological war is over. Far from it. China still faces challenges in chip design, supply chain logistics, materials science, and production yields. But the wall, that great impenetrable wall, has been breached. Not with fanfare, not with announcements, but with quiet, calculated precision. And that's what makes it so powerful. This isn't just about chips. It's about narratives.
It's about who gets to decide what's possible. For decades, the global semiconductor race was controlled by a few. Power flowed through their supply chains, their patents, their political influence. But now that power is being redistributed, not by force, but by innovation born of necessity. We are witnessing the early days of a new era, one where the technological playing field may no longer be dictated solely by who has the most advanced tools, but by who can do the most with the least. An era where the definition of impossible is being redrawn. And this time it's being redrawn in silence, not spectacle. So the next time you hear someone say that China can't catch up, that they're years behind, remember this moment. Because in the world of semiconductors, the most powerful revolutions don't always come with explosions. Sometimes they come quietly, chip by chip. It was seen as the end of the road, a technological wall too high to climb, too costly to scale. The world had accepted it. Seven nanometers was the limit for DUV. Anything beyond, five nanometer, three nanometer was a fantasy. A rabbit hole of exponential complexity, skyrocketing costs, and vanishing yields. The math didn't work. The physics didn't bend. It was over. Or so everyone believed. But what if that belief was wrong? What if the limitations of DUV weren't a death sentence, but a puzzle, waiting for a different kind of mind to solve it? What if the very flaws of multi-patterning, the thing that made it seem impractical, could be turned into a new kind of strength? This is where the story takes a turn, because while the global tech giants poured billions into EUV and followed the official roadmap to the future, something else was happening. Quietly. Relentlessly. In the shadows. A different game was being played. Not one of brute force investment, but of sheer ingenuity, obsession, and national purpose. And then seemingly out of nowhere came a roar. The Kirin 9000s. Not a rumor. Not a leak. A real physical object tucked inside Huawei's Mate 60 Pro. Analysts and experts tore the device apart. The chip inside? A 7 Nelum class processor mass produced by SMIC. Not a prototype. Not a fluke. Real volume production. From a company that wasn't supposed to be capable of such a feat. Under sanctions. Cut off from EUV. Operating with one hand tied behind its back. And yet, it was done. The impossible was now real. The global semiconductor world staggered, stunned. But still, the consensus held. 7 Nemele was already a miracle. 3 Nem? That wasn't just a step up. It was another universe. A challenge that would demand a reinvention of the very tools and processes used to build chips. It wasn't supposed to happen. Not under sanctions. Not without EUV. Not by SMIC. Not now. And yet slowly the whispers began. Whispers turned into reports. Reports turned into confirmation. And confirmation into shock. The next leap had happened. Huawei and SMIC had done it again. Not in secret. Not as a one-off. But in mass production. The 3 nilmo barrier, once considered unbreakable, had just been shattered. And not with the help of EUV. No, this was a DUV revolution. A masterclass in precision engineering, material innovation, and design methodology. They had pushed multi-patterning to a level no one thought possible. They had built a whole new road, brick by brick, curve by curve. Around the EUV wall, the rest of the world was still staring at. This chip isn't just a product. It's a message. It's proof. It's a line in the sand. A declaration of technological independence. For decades, the world assumed the future of chips would be controlled by a few. That the roadmap was fixed. That EUV was the gatekeeper of progress. But now that illusion is broken. China has written its own roadmap. And it leads to three nimum. This changes everything. The chip war of 2025 is no longer a one-sided game. Sanctions, once seen as a crushing blow, are now revealed as merely a speed bump. What was intended to cripple has instead ignited a fire. Huawei and SMIC have not just caught up, they've redefined the race. The implications are vast. The battle for 6G dominance just became real. Chinese brands, Xiaomi, Oppo, OnePlus, now have access to a domestic pipeline of cutting-edge silicon. No more waiting. No more restrictions. With Harmony OS accelerating and China's tech ecosystem becoming increasingly self-reliant, the world is witnessing a tectonic shift. This is the start of a new era. One driven not just by innovation, but by necessity, grit, and ambition. The digital dragon is no longer sleeping. It's wide awake and roaring. So now the question isn't if China can catch up, 
It's who else is ready for what comes next. Were you ready for this? Were you expecting the three enemy to break through to come from here, from now, from them? And what happens when Sukhan Mitra, or beyond, is no longer a Western monopoly either? What's your take on this seismic shift? What other innovations do you see on the horizon? Drop your thoughts in the comments. You might just spark our next deep dive. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve, subscribe now. This community isn't just watching history, we're decoding it, frame by frame.